Welcome class to Kitchen 101, where we learn how to think like a chef, how to cook, not what to cook, so that you can create and modify recipes to fit your chosen way of eating and lifestyle. Today we're going to talk about how to pour hot liquids into cold glass without it shattering. Recently, my daughter decided to take a hot beverage with her on a road trip. Her vessel of choice was a mason jar like this one. A couple seconds after pouring the boiling hot liquid into it, it shattered and hot glass and uh, water went everywhere. My wife, who was overseeing the operation, asked me why that happened. She, she knew that mason jars were used to can things. You have to boil them to sterilize them. So why did the mason jar break? What could we have done to prevent that from happening? Let's take a look. First, we need to know why heat causes glass to break. In order to do that, we need to get into a little physics. Wait, 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 don't leave. I promise I'll make this as interesting and as brief as I can. There are two principles we need to understand about heat. The first is that there are some things heat likes to travel through and some things it doesn't. This property is called conductivity. Yes, yes, just like in electricity. Glass has a very low conductivity, 0.61 BTU per foot hour Fahrenheit. I probably said that wrong. Compare this to say copper that is used in many a high grade cookware, which has a high conductivity, 232 BTU foot hour Fahrenheit. Because of this, glass does not like to absorb heat. However, most countertops are made of things that are much more conductive than glass. For instance, for mica at about 170 BTU per foot hour Fahrenheit. That will happily suck away any heat in the bottom of the glass. The second is that heat makes things expand. You see this principle quite easily if you place an ice cube in a pan on the stove. It will go from ice, to water, to steam, and evaporate. Ta-da! Science! When we apply these two principles to putting hot liquids into glass, we can understand what happens. The hot liquid hits the glass and starts moving heat into it. The bottom outside of the glass is sitting on a cold conductive countertop. The countertop happily starts absorbing the heat from the bottom of the glass. Because the glass doesn't like to share heat with itself, the outside bottom will become colder than the inside top. This means that one part is expanding at a different rate than the rest. When the difference becomes too great, the glass will break. How does this help us not shatter glass when we're pouring hot liquids into it? Well, we know we need to stop the glass from expanding at different rates so it doesn't break. Let's look how to do this. First, we can put something with a lower conductivity between the glass and the countertop. Something like a dish towel, or a pot holder, or a silicone mat. This will prevent the countertop from sucking up all the heat from the bottom of the glass. Incidentally, this is the same reason, in reverse, that you put a dish towel in the bottom of your canning pot, so that the bottom of the jar doesn't get hotter faster than the rest of the glass. This is the most important step. It will do more to keep the glass from shattering than everything else combined. So if you don't do any of the other steps, make sure you insulate the bottom of that glass. Second, pour slowly. The less of the heat that is in there, then the less the glass will expand. No use getting in a rush and having hot glass and liquid all over your kitchen. The few seconds you lose pouring slowly will be well worth it. Third, preheat the jar. Open up the hot water on your tap and let it run until it gets hot. Then, fill the jar with hot water. Let it set for 10 to 15 seconds, and then dump it out. You might want to use a protective mitt. It can't get hot. This brings the temperature of the glass up without it hitting the breaking point. The temperature change isn't great enough to break the glass. Fourth, we can lower the temperature of the liquid before pouring it in. You can do this by either A, just letting the water sit there for a minute, or B, pour the liquid into the jar over the back of a spoon. This dumps a bunch of the heat out into the air as steam. Be careful or you'll get an impromptu facial. Chef tip. Always use the back of the spoon, not the front, so that the hot liquid doesn't splash back up at you. From now on, when you're gonna pour hot liquid into a cold glass, make sure you follow these four protocols to ensure that your glass doesn't shatter. Number one, insulate. This is the most important step. Put an insulator, like a dish towel, under the glass to keep the heat in the glass and not going into your countertop. Number two, pour slowly. Don't get in a rush. 
You aren't going to die of thirst anytime soon. If you are, you just consider drinking from the tap. Number three, preheat the glass. Taking the heat up in stages helps minimize the risk of shattering. Number four, cool it down. You can't consume boiling hot liquid, so there's very little reason to be pouring it at that temperature. Less heat means less chances of breaking. Bonus tip! You may have seen glassware on the market that's designed to be used on a stove or in an oven. This is specially treated glass that won't shatter at those high temperatures. The very first of these used soda lime in the mixture to increase its conductivity. Perhaps you're into antiques or have some family heirlooms. If so, you may have heard of soda glass. This technique isn't as popular today, but is still in use. Another technique is called tempering. In this process, a finished piece of glasswork is slowly heated to a very high temperature, around 600 degrees Fahrenheit, and then rapidly cooled with short bursts of air. The most popular heat-resistant glass is a product called Pyrex. Pyrex uses various additives in order to give it great heat-resistant properties. Here is a quote from a paper they released way back in 1954. Pyrex labware, you see has a high thermal strength. It can take direct burner flame, hold high temperature contents, take sudden thermal shock, all with no effect. And it has a low coefficient of expansion so that it can be made heavier and can be reinforced at points of stress, greatly increasing its service life. Thank y'all for coming to class today. Now you know how to pour a hot liquid into a cold glass without it shattering and going everywhere. Please subscribe if you want to get notifications every time I release a new class. Also, we have more stuff over at patreon.com forward slash Professor Kitchen. Thank you all for coming today. Hope you have a great week. God bless. Class dismissed. I'm in the wrong spot. Okay, from now on, you may, you may have seen <clears throat> Recently, my daughter. <clears throat> Recently, my daughter. Try that again. No, her vessel of choice was this mason jar or a mason jar like that. Try that again. How can she have prevented uh, this from? Seriously? No.